can you hear me? Susan Dodd is a legend. Here it comes. Yes. Today's event went great. We, we had a great turnout from our students and the community. And it was great to honor Susan Dodd, who's done so much for her college. We're all excited. This is the beginning of many projects that are going to help improve our college and, and bring our community on our campus. So it's just been a great day today. Not only she she had a lot of history that she was willing to share with me, but I can tell that she, she's been very committed to this institution. And as I was putting this together, I realized how important and significant she's been to, to our college. Susan um, has been committed to us for many years. She was our first female full-time faculty member in the kinesiology and athletics department. Susan Dodd is a phenomenal person. This is a well-deserved honor, and I would like to thank her for um, being here all the years and the monumental historic uh, things that she's done for us, so thank you. To be able to see the ribbon cutting, to listen to um, her speak, it just it's so moving because the history is what makes this college so rich, and Susan Dodd is our history. So, yeah, she said a pathway for women at our college, and it was so great to see the students out here to support. So, it was great. I would like to thank the Board of Trustees, the administration, both past and present, and the Educational Foundation. And I appreciate everyone being here today for the ribbon cutting ceremony. It is my hope that you see this as a bridge to success. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'm very proud to have uh, completed one of our projects, especially to honor a good friend of mine, Susan Dodd, who I've known for over 35 years. She's a phenomenal person, and I'm so, so excited about today's event, the turnout, uh, having Dr. Avila here and Dr. Rose is amazing. I was here at the very beginning when we were just trying to fix this old bridge and by replacing some boards and everything. And I gotta tell you, I'm very excited to see what has happened in the past three years. Going from an idea just to fix an old dilapidated bridge to building the structure that's gonna be here long after many of us are gone. So congratulations to the trustees, to the foundation and Gavlin College for this great bridge that's now in place. Well, Coach, thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with me today and to talk about your season for football. Do you have a certain point of emphasis that you are introducing to your players in your practices and in your trainings? Um, our theme this year is kind of to be more physical. So what we've done is increase our weight program a little bit more, a little more emphasis in our tackling. Have you seen improvements in the areas that you want to improve on? You know, we're a very young team, so it's a matter of them trying to understand how to play college football as compared to high school football. Maybe they do hit a wall. How do you intend to help them get over that hurdle? Just how we practice. So just trying to get them to get their bodies where they're not hurting and sore all the time. Are you more of a defense-minded coach or an offense? I am more of a defensive coach. This is my 39th year coaching. In all the years that I've been a head coach, this is the first season I am not coaching in position. Do you find it better that you're in that position now? Yes, just teaching the young men how to practice and what they're supposed to wear and how they're supposed to look. I have a little bit more attention to detail this year than I've had in the past. Is there something that you want your players to, to have from you and to stick with them? It's just the work ethic. I always talk to them, I have all these little sayings and one of them is the guy at the top of the mountain didn't fall there. You know, you have to work to get there. And you as a coach, is there something that you take away yourself? What I relish the most is just the relationships with the young men. Um, having young men come back to me with families after a few years and just talking and still calling me coach, I think that's the biggest part of it. Hi, I'm Cameron Norson for Gavlin TV News and today we're here with Nacho Moya who was a Gavlin student. How does it feel to be back? It feels so great, uh, especially, you know, doing a show here at Gavilan College is one, it was one of my dreams and it's happening now, you know, uh, I was here uh, back in 2005 and, and it feels so good, like just being here again, it's like a dream come true, especially in my town here in Gilroy. Are there any um, pieces that specifically um, have significance for you? 
I mean, every single piece has a meaning to me, uh, but in most of the paintings, uh, I've been, you know, highlighting more like uh, Latino leaders, especially in uh, Hispanic Heritage Month, uh, and also the farm workers, where I, I see the farm workers as superheroes. So they, they, they work so hard to feed America, and thanks to them, we have uh, f food and vegetables on our table. So there's a lot of pieces that represent the farm workers. And, but I also, you know, um, highlight, you know, a lot of great leaders in the community. I want to make a change in, 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 in the community. So I like to do art that's going to inspire others and then it's going to change somebody's life. I want to tell everybody to never be afraid of following your dreams. Never be scared about failing because failing is part of success. I mean, I'm grateful for all my failures, you know, and, and, and without my failures, I wouldn't be here today. So I want to tell everybody to never be afraid to fail because that's a, something, instead of looking at negative, it's actually so so positive. So Nacho is a former student of Gavilan and you know he's got a very a unique background. He came here as an immigrant. Uh, he went through a lot of challenges, poverty, housing insecurity, and, but he followed his dream. He followed his dream to become an artist and uh, he's definitely somebody who I feel is a great role model for our students and for our community. He, he went through a lot of adversity and we know that a lot of our community college students go through adversity and, and Nacho persevered. And so this is why I, I think, you know, I was really excited to bring him here so that he can share his story. Not just his art, but his story so that he can inspire students and, and show what it what it looks like when, when you work hard and, and you stay focused uh, and, and you follow your dreams. And it's also my, my way as a president to support the arts. I think the arts are really important. Uh, there's so much uh, that they bring uh, to our campus, to our community mental health, uh, and just people being able to express themselves and, and through art is so important. So I, I just want people to know that I'm, I'm a strong supporter of the arts and our, our arts department, uh, theater arts, all the different arts on campus. I, I, I really enjoy supporting our, our programs. I'm here with the ASGC president. Uh, what do you think about this exhibit? I think it's really great. I think it's such a, honestly, a great space to just display local art and especially with Nacho being here and displaying his art, it's really beautiful. It looks like we have a great turnout already. I know the event's just starting, but there's already a lot of people here and I'm just, very thankful that we have such a great community here at Gavilan that will be able to do this event. Hi, I'm Ariel Miorgo with Gav TV News. I'm here with Coach Anyam. Coach, so you guys were down 14 at halftime. You ended up winning by six points. What did you say or like what adjustments did you make to get that win? Well, I said the game's not over. It's 40 minutes of basketball, right? They were doing what they do. Um, they were bombing away threes. That's what they do. Bombing away threes, messing up our defense and all that. But you got 20 more minutes to protect your home court. I made an adjustment. The guys responded, held the fort down, and really credit to them, they just fought. A lot of teams would have just folded because that's a 5 and one team. They're doing what they do. They're just bombing away threes, and we don't have a way to stop it but this team fought. They really showed great character and I'm proud of them. You know, we have a pretty young team, a lot of guys who redshirted last year, a lot of freshmen. Uh, we do have four sophomores, you know, who played in some amount last, last year. Uh, but I think a win like this can show those young guys because a lot of those freshmen and new guys were in there in the clutch time. Um, it shows what you can do if you just believe in yourself, you play confidently and you just play hard and you fight. It's a lesson that you can't even replicate at practice. You have to go through a game like this with an opponent like this and an atmosphere like this. And if you're lucky enough to come out on top, you got to hold on to that. You know, honestly, uh, last game we didn't play such great defense, but this game, we uh, that was our main focus. You know, even though we uh, gave up 80 is a lot, but, um, you know, coming down that stretch, we really tightened it up. Uh, we were switching, we are rotating. So I think stacking this game on top of our record really shows that we could compete with uh, a lot of the better teams. We are a defensive team. Even the first half, you know, the first half score didn't show it. <laughs> we are, we pride ourselves on defense. It's basically all we work on. Bryson hadn't been rebounding well all year. We had a talk this, uh, this afternoon, looked at his numbers, 6'5", athletic. You're only averaging three rebounds a game. I put a challenge to him. Your team needs you to rebound. 
and he responded in the biggest way possible. We have a big 6A guy and all that, but if you watch that film, it is Bryson, our freshman, who was challenged all over the boards. That's the biggest part of this, right? His teammates helped, but like he stepped up to a challenge, a direct challenge, and that's that's awesome. Like I'm so proud of him. You know, coach just told me I needed to be better on the boards, and I I just took it to heart, and uh, you know, I just wanted to be better. I don't know. I mean, I was just locked in from the start. I started hitting some shots, and I just got rolling, and you know, I just kept shooting them, and they they went in. This is probably my best game ever. I had you know I had some 20 point games in high school and stuff, but. I've never had a 30-point game, so this is my first 30 ball. I want them to enjoy this and be able to replay in their minds and visually what they can do when they stick together and they fight and they work hard. I'm, honestly, I'm still thinking about this, vic this victory. I'm savoring it, but I'm thinking about the next opponent. We got Feather River coming here. The old coach, Derek Jen Jensen, that used to coach here, he's bringing his team down. I know he's going to want to battle hard and get a win on, on this court. I know as much as our guys loved him, they want to beat him. So my mind is thinking about and preparing for that game. The Coast Conference can wait. I want, I want to win the next game. Hi, I'm Leslie Salgado, and we're here at the second annual Rockies Haunted House here at Gavlin College. Let's check it out. So we're actually having our Haunted House event. This is the second year we're having it. And uh, it's gonna be super fun. There's gonna be food, games, and of course the main attraction, the Haunted House. But it's not just a Haunted House. It is also an event just to give back to our community. So it is a donation drive for cans and per non-perishable foods. So um, to enter the Haunted House, we're asking for cans so we can donate them to St. Joseph's Center. I love this event. It's uh, spirited and spooky and just, just a great energy here. What a great event this has been, put on by ASGC and Gavlin College. We can't wait till next year. Hi everyone, my name is Ashton Acosta Parson. I am with GAD TV News and here today with Josue Salgado, coach of the men's soccer team. Josue, big win today for your team. Describe to us what is it like to get this win? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a huge win. Uh, they had me nervous there. That's, this has kind of been the story for Gavlin men's soccer a lot throughout the year. We play well, we do everything right, but we just are, are missing that last piece. Thankfully for us, uh, Hector was able to get in the, the back of the net and go home with a 1-0 win. Honestly, um, on that throw, I didn't think it was going to come to me. I mean, it was a really tough game, like credit to them. And then, But we, at the same time, we did miss a lot of shots. I missed one in the first half, too. So I knew like in the last moment, I had to like, make something happen. Very tough game, you know. Chances missed. Slipping over the ball, a lot of people um, not focused, neither was I. Took us a bit and uh, got a game-winning goal at the last minute. So you guys are 11 and 6 overall, but with a 4-4 four and four conference record, describe to us what's the plan going on to win these next five games. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely just taking it one game at a time. That, that's been our, our motto throughout the entire season. Each win is three points, so times that by five games. Once you're in playoffs, it, everyone is 0-0 and it's a brand new season. As you mentioned before, throughout the game, there was a lot of close calls and goals missed, of course. Can you tell us how you got your team back and make sure not to let those get to you or any of your teammates? Um, to be honest, it's a lot of communication, you know, got to lead from wherever you're at on the field, you know, got to talk to everybody. Front line, got to talk to the back line. Back line, got to talk to the midfield, and then everyone's talking, you know. Goalie also got to lead from the back as well. It all starts with the coach, though. Coach gives us enough energy for us to talk to each other, for us to be confident with each other. Tell us, what was your feeling when you first heard the news that you guys got ranked? Being completely honest, I was proud, but it's kind of tricky when you do get ranked because you, your team becomes complacent. So as much as I was proud to be ranked as a first year program, I realized that, hey, this is a dangerous position to be in because now we, we can get a little complacent and kind of slack off, but it looks like we're, uh, we're, we're catching stride and we're looking to finish strong. Do you have any difference in strategy, whether it comes to recruiting or returners and how you're gonna deal with that? Yeah, no, I'm, I mean, I'm super excited. We, as, as you mentioned, we have 33 players on the roster. They're all freshmen, meaning uh, if we keep them all eligible, then we have everyone staying and then we're just bringing in freshmen and just kind of filling in the holes and the gaps that need to be filled. What was recruiting like, especially for a first year program? Yeah, well, it was definitely a uh, challenge, right? No one wants to go to a first year program because ideally first year programs are not that good and you don't have 
a lot of players, but when you have a great support system like Jamie Adams and a president like Dr. Avila to uh, back you and you have your coaching staff, all those pieces coming together, we were able to come up with uh, 30, 30 players, which a lot of colleges are not able to get and we are able to get that as, as a first year. Ended up here by the luck of Josue and uh, the two-time Mario. Uh, great coaching staff here. Nobody promised me anything. It was just everything that they were talking about I was interested in. I, I came from Andrew Hill and we played against um, coach's team twice. And after that, after the games ended, he started. He was contacting me and uh, our number 10, Manny. I feel like he actually cares about us and he actually wants like our future to be good in soccer. That's what motivated me to come more because not only does he care about winning, but he, only, he cares about us as individual players. That's what I like about Gav is because they not only care about like the program itself, but they care about like each of us individually and for us to make it somewhere in life, not only career-wise, but also athletic-wise. Our chemistry is already good, just nice in a couple of months. So I feel like if we all return next year, I feel like we'll even have a better season than this one. Hi, my name is Ashton Acosta Parson with Gav TV News, and I'm here with David Baruzzi. He is one of the full time music instructors. And can you tell us a little bit more about the jazz music concert here? So, this is our fifth year doing it. I started this uh, because we wanted to bring some more jazz to the community. And um, it seemed like there was an interest for it, not only from the students, but also with the surrounding community. But yeah, it's been, it's been a great success. I try to change up the lineup um, each year with either different high school groups or different headlining uh, acts. These are all professional musicians in the Bay Area scene. So we try to kind of, you know, give an example of some of the uh, students from the surrounding schools, as well as a professional group from the from the Bay Area scene. So I play drums, drum set. I actually got a classical degree from San Jose State and I teach there in the uh, jazz department as adjunct faculty and I just mostly play live as a working musician. I was invited by David, who I've known at least 20 years, if not more. That's the beauty of music, you get to play it with friends. Super appreciative that David um, invited us and um, we're, we're really excited to be a part of it. This is our first time. It seemed like there was an interest for, for more concerts here at Gavilan. It's an amazing campus. This is a great theater. It's really got a, it's its own kind of characteristics. It's got a vibe. Um, people like to check out music and there wasn't really a, a concert dedicated to jazz. So we figured, hey, let's, uh, let's give it a shot. Hi, my name is Jason Mattingly. Uh, I'm with Gab TV News, and I'm here with the volleyball coach, uh, Erica Slade. How do you feel after this uh, game? I feel proud of the girls for the way that they play. Who we are as a team kind of showed up today. We were quiet, which kind of hurt us. But every game that we're quiet and it's tough for us, there's always like a spur of points where it's like we fight and like we are rallying, we're going after everything, we're scrappy, then the girls start getting pumped up and the audience starts getting pumped up. And I just feel like that's who we are. So in the end, it's a tough loss, but I'm just like really grateful that they chose to stick together and get through this night. They seem to be in okay spirits. So at the end of the day, I'm kind of just like, this is our season, these are the cards we're dealt. I knew that we were missing one of our middles and so I, I felt like I needed to step up and be the person to put balls away and um, be there for my team and try and get those points. Yeah, but it was really exciting. <laughs> yeah. 
I feel like we stuck together a little more as a team this year. We were a little more energetic. I feel like we, we've grown a lot more than, uh, than we have at the beginning of the year. Us compared to the beginning was crazy. We are so much better as a team now than we were. Uh, and last year we, we were pretty good, but uh, I feel like we're a little more together this year. Some highs would probably be our game against San Mateo, uh, the third set. We really fought back and just had a lot of fun with it and we were just playing like a team and everyone was laughing and like we were just all proud of ourselves of how good we played. Because they're a really good team and they're like really big. So, and we're a small team, so we worked with what we had and we did really good. My goal is to get a lot of team building and a lot of team bonding in right away so that when things are hard during practice and during games, um, the girls just naturally have each other's backs because they feel more connected and more like sisters and they have a bond with each other that's not about volleyball, it's about um, their feelings and how, like their friendship more and I think that that's going to be a difference that makes us stronger next year is having a deeper connection. Hey, I'm Jordy. I'm with Gav TV News, and I'm at the annual Gavlin College Health Fair. Let's take a look. Today we're at Gavlin College at the health fair. So today's focusing on health resources and students who are in health programs and also students who might just need uh, some support in, as far as their personal health goes. I would like to say thank you. Thank you to Gavlin uh, for having us here on site. Uh, this is an amazing event. This is our second year that we've been here. Uh, the health fair is a great event where organizations can come together and offer resources to students. And also students can learn more about organizations and what they do in the community and how they can be a part of that organization as well or, or how we can all help each other. And um, one of my favorite parts is learning more about the different organizations that are present today and also learning more about students. Students want to get to know St. Louis and that's what we're here. We're here to advocate our services. The free stuff is one of the things that brought me out. I was like, oh, there's food here, I'll come. And I'm learning along the way. It's been really fun. It's been a great experience and like meeting all these students, great group of people and all the other providers. It's been really fun. How about you? Yeah, it's been super fun. When I first came out, I was really excited to see that there's a lot of people here out coming and getting res resources because there's a lot out here, so it's very exciting. It was really nice to see all the community partners out here, and it was a good experience connecting with them. I think a lot of the times as college students, we're kind of coming into our own. We feel very alone in the world sometimes, but Gavilan being a community college, it brings us together and teaches us what community is, right? How we can work together, support each other, and also look out for ourselves. So it's good that we come together like this. I think it's really awesome to be able to take part of this kind of event on Gavilan campus. Know really what they had until they saw it coming together going undefeated, 6-0, finishing off the regular season at 10-0, entering the national playoffs. But also to be nominated for the national championship. I'm now going to recognize what started out as a roster of 35 players from all over the country. Mike never matters. Marshall Sanchez, yeah. defense attacker number 71, Timmy Smith, Ray Sanchez. To bring her to a 12 0 undefeated season and a national championship, my dad, Bob Garcia. Yeah.